go. This is five years in the making. Actually, it's probably 20 plus years in, in the making for these. Um, with great joy, we come together in the presence of the Lord this afternoon um, to join this man, Grayson Mendicke, and this woman, Sarah McCain, in holy matrimony. So we are excited that each one of you are here. Your presence signifies your love for them and uh, their support, your support for their future together. So, probably, I guess it was 2015, and this is the first time I saw these two together. It was March. I remember very clearly sitting next to my wife at a Trinidad training showcase where these two were about to go to Trinidad on a mission trip. And I'll lean over to my wife and say, hey, who's that blonde girl that he's sitting next to? Because they were very chummy. Um, and I said, I said, watch this. The, these two may end up together. And five years later, they ended up together. So let us pray as we start out this afternoon. Father, we are um, eternally thankful for your son, Jesus Christ, and for his death and for his resurrection on our behalf. Um, we pray for wisdom and discernment for this couple as um, they embark on a new journey together instead of separately. So may they ask the question often, Lord, what would you have us do versus what would you have me do? Um, would you give them a, a faith that is visible to those around them as a testimony of your Son, Jesus Christ, uh, and your love for us? And so we offer up this uh, day and to you. We pray these things in your Son's name. Amen. Grace and Sarah, how grateful we are that the Lord has brought you together. And saved you for each other, kept you for each other. The wait is over. Now these are two very fine young people that God has drawn together. And they both believe in Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. And thus Grace and Sarah are already united in Christ Jesus as fellow believers. We ask that God pave the pathway of this dear couple with his goodness and his grace. We're here with abundant joy to thank him um, for what he has done in their lives and entrust their future to him. Uh, the building of a Christian home is one of the most important foundations of realizing the kingdom of God here on earth. There's no such thing as a Christian church without a Christian home. And there's no such thing as a Christian home without a Christian couple. And so that's what this demands today. Is that today is a wedding covenant between Grayson and Sarah. This couple is committed to abide in faith, love, and hope. Love being the greatest of those. Uh, and the greatest love about which we know is the love of God, who sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on our behalf. Grace and Sarah know the Lord, Jesus, as their personal Savior. For to be committed to Him is to be numbered among those whose joy it is to call God Father. The two of you become one today. You're individuals with distinct roles, distinct gifts, distinct responsibilities, yet together you're a completed creation, an entity of God's design. And I charge you then to be an example of all God had in mind when he conceived the home. Be a source of encouragement to those who contemplate marriage for their future and silence the critics of marriage by the witness of your own happiness. Allow your home to illustrate the truth of Christ's relationship to God. And let the Lord Jesus rejoice in his observation of your fulfillment. I remind you that God takes his relationship very seriously that he likens it to the relationship that exists between Christ and his church. Christ being the groom and his fellowship of believers being his bride. Now, I went on a youth trip probably about two years ago with our church. And on that trip to Mexico, 
we went to a cowboy dinner. And so the MC of that dinner uh, was pulling the audience, how long have you been married? And we got to this one couple who had been married for 62 years. Everyone clapped because it was 62 years, and that's a long time. And he asked the lady, what's your secret? How come you've been married for 62 years? And the wise lady in one sentence said this, when you say I do, mean it. Very wise. And so decide today that you will not use divorce as a weapon. It is never to be said amongst the two of you now. For Christ will be the glue that holds you together. Grayson and Sarah, if you are ready to make these vows to God and to each other, please join me. You are joined hands. You ready? Grayson, will you have this woman, Sarah, to be your wife? To live together after God's ordinances in marriage. Will you pray for her? Encourage her? Will you love her? Honor her? And lead her by serving her? And through the grace of God, be faithful to her and to her alone? Sarah, will you have this man, Grayson, to be your husband? To live together after God's ordinances in marriage? Will you pray for him and encourage him? Will you love him, honor him, and listen to him? And through the grace of God, be faithful to him and to him alone. Grace and Sarah, do you have tokens of love and affection to give one another as a seal of this holy ceremony? The ring does not make you married, but instead it reveals you to be married. It shares a special message that you belong to each other. It represents your vow and commitment to each other for as long as you both shall live. Grayson, as you place this ring on her finger, repeat after me. I, Grayson, take thee, Sarah, I, Grayson, take thee, Sarah to be my wedded wife, to, be my wedded wife to, have and to, to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. And to you I pledge my faithfulness. Sarah, invested with the same significance as the ring you just received, place this ring on Grayson's finger and repeat after me. I, Sarah, take thee, Grayson, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. And to you I pledge my faithfulness. Grace and Sarah have just sealed their relationship by giving and receiving their rings and are committing to take their separate lives and make them a life together till death do they part. This joining together under Christ is symbolized through the pouring of two individual containers of sand.
At this time, Sir and Grace Navas, here is set Father Mike Martin to pray for them in their marriage. Mike? Father, just uh, bless, uh, ask you to say, Sir and Grace, we just uh, pray that uh, in the, uh, the travels and the journey, Father, that uh, this group, the family and friends, will uh, be supported. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Yesterday at the rehearsal dinner, uh, I went for lunch. Ryder made mention of of good and better, and the two of you together are better. And there's a verse that's also a good verse to to live by as a married couple. That without it. Marriage is good, but with the verse, marriage will be better. And that verse is Ephesians 4.32. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So, Grayson and Sarah... On the basis of your covenant before God and all of us, and by the authority given me as a minister of the gospel of Christ, and in accordance with the laws of the city of Texas, <laughs> I pronounce you husband and wife. Grace, you may kiss your Lord. Grayson, you're <laughs>